I got to hear Stan Kenton's band, which I had never really heard in person. It was kind of a stiff West Coast band, in my estimation. I didn't really like it. When I heard the band, there was some new music being played, and music of Bill Holman, which was kind of changing the atmosphere and the feeling of the band. It was a little more loose, things like that. Well, I knew all the guys on the band, Conti Condoli, Buddy Childers, Bill Holman, guys like that. They suggested to Stan that he hire me. And uh, Stan had heard that I just got out, you know, a few months ago. And he's a great guy. He took it, he said, fine, you okay? That's all he ever said to me, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm okay. And he said, fine, you start in two weeks. Half the band was was uh, young guys that, that really hadn't had much experience, and, and the thought of having uh, one of the, the uh, bebop classic players join the band was kind of scary to a lot of us. Uh, half the band was was old, seasoned road players, and uh, they probably just took it as <clears throat> another happening on the road. But uh, a lot of us were really impressed and and uh, kind of intimidated and uh, anyway Stan came in and uh, he brought a lot of talent. I don't know how much big band experience he'd had but he, he realized that the role of a drummer was to make the man swing and that was the thing he could do. I really didn't have that much big band experience. I mean working with Minnie Goodman was kind of a swing, almost Dixie swing type of thing. You know, back in, his music was in the 30s, 40s. This was modern, and there was a big band, 10 brass, a very loud band. I didn't have the control yet to control that band, to move it around the way it should be moved. It took me a while to do it, a couple of weeks, and uh, but I got the knack right away. And the other thing was the reading. I wasn't that good at reading, but I did learn quickly. I picked right up on it because seeing it on paper and hearing it, you put the two together, earn while you learn, okay? That worked out very, very good for me, and the band got better and better and better and better until it was just, by 1953, it was dynamite. We went to Europe and tore up the whole place. <laughs> On the 52-53 the band that I played in, we had uh, all the great soloists. Uh, 
uh, Conde Condoli on trumpet, Lee Konitz, alto sax, Zoot Sims on tenor sax, which is uh, hanging out with Zoot was the, the high point of, one of the high points of my life, really, because I, I, I got a lot out of him. <laughs> creators of the School of Modern Music, a guy that's achieving tremendous things with an alto saxophone, Lee Konitz. I joined the Stan Kenton Band in 1952 uh, with Richie Kamuka. Uh, Stan had called me uh, and told me that Stan Levy was going to be on the band and Conti Condoli and Frank Rossellino and Bill Holman. I thought, well, uh, big bands weren't really uh, my favorite a place to be. Being a saxophone player sitting in front of ten brass is not an enviable place to be, I must say. I joined the band as a tenor saxophone player and uh, Stan was very encouraging. He said he kept after me to write and uh, uh, <clears throat> I didn't know what to write because I didn't, didn't want to or didn't know how to write the progressive jazz that he had been doing in the, in the 40s. And I knew that he didn't want to count Basie arrangements because he said so. And so I had to f try to figure out a, a way that I could work, make my writing work with his band. And so I didn't write anything for about the first nine months I was on the band. And, uh, but in the meantime, I was playing all these Jerry Mulligan charts, which had come on the band about the same time I did. And, uh, just playing those things night after night really gave me a lot of insight on, on how really good writers put arrangements and, and compositions together. started writing and Stan kept encouraging me and he paid me for everything that I wrote, whether it was any good or not. And uh, eventually it, uh, I was able to re retain enough of the jazz feel that I had and uh, yet make it palatable for him, for Stan, you know. And, and I give him credit because he knew that his, his original idea for the band was getting away from him. Well, in Ken's orchestra, you know, there are certain guys that relate to the audience right away. And they were playing uh, uh, bebop. But normally that wouldn't be what they would play in, in that orchestra because his was a grand orchestra thing. Ba, 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 da, de, da, ba, ba, you know. Then you hear out of that this trombone player that would be playing his solo and it would be something else altogether. So it, it connected with the audience. Playing drums with Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie was enormously different from playing drums for Stan Kenton. Um, big band, a lot of brass, not known for their capacity to um, have a particularly propulsive sense of swing. Uh, although when Stan was playing with him, uh, somehow he managed to sneak some of it in. And again, that was another part of his uh, very special talent. Now, I've heard a lot of drummers play with that band, or well, a few drummers, and they all sounded like good. But when you have to play with, I think there may be 10 or 12 brass, and five saxophones, and 84 rhythm, you have to have that energy and Stan, well, I don't, I didn't believe how good he sounded with the band. He had all that energy and strength. He really carried that band. And uh, to me, any band that I have, the drummer is the leader of the band. He's the most important guy in the band. He's the first guy you hire in a band. And Stan was in that band, even though Stan Kent may have stood in front of the band, Stan Levy was the, was the leader of that band. Well, I love Stan Kenton. He was great, great guy, and he always traveled with the band. And we'd have we'd have Bud Brisboy and Frank Huggins and Billy Catalano, but five trumpets, I think. And uh, we'd be playing as loud and as high as we could. And Stan would be going up and out in front of him. <laughs> you know, give us more. And Bud Brisboy would be, uh, you know, passing out. Some of the players in the band were very, very good. Uh, Kamuka, I got Kamuka in the band, from my band. I told Stan to hire him, which he did. And the writing was the, the most important thing. Uh, Bill Holman was tremendous. 
he wrote in a linear way. In other words, the lines, the musical lines were long, not choppy, the way Kenton's band had been. <clears throat> and it took Stan a while to get used to hearing that. And Mulligan kind of wrote the same way. I think they fed off of each other. And some of the charts that he wrote were just incredible for that band. Uh, just, just terrific. And then we, we got uh, uh, Lee Konitz in, Zoot Sims, people, Conti Condoli, and a lot of those guys I worked with at the Lighthouse later on when I left Stan, that would be Condoli, Rossellino, and uh, Richie Kamuka. And uh, we went on to have a really good, tight, tight group. I always gave credit to Stan, whose music might have been a little esoteric to some, but still, he had a, he had a, a sound in his mind, and he pursued it and became a, a big time, <laughs> you better believe it, big time star as an orchestra leader. He uh, might not have been the world's greatest jazz piano player, that's admitted, but, uh, admitted by many people, and, uh, but so what? The band was just a, a wonderful experiment uh, uh, and uh, made possible by Stan's personality. He wasn't afraid to stand up and say what he wanted to say. I'm so sorry that his life ended the way it did because he had this alcohol problem, which I really wasn't aware of. I never saw him drink. But obviously he was drinking and, you know, as you get older, you can't control it. But I was very, and he died really relatively broke and things like that. And I, it made me feel bad because he took a chance on me. He saw that I had the ability and he took a chance to let me do what I could do. He never said, do this, do that. He says, just do it. Are you okay? Yes. Go, let's go. I mean, that, that's a great guy.